Hello everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Minecraft Hardcore. And yes, this is a little bit of a long one, but in this episode, we're going to do something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. We have been building this Minecraft Hardcore world for over 2000 days and in all that time we haven't once stopped to smell the flowers, to just sit around, look at what we've created and take it all in on a grander scale and that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going around this world, taking a look at everything we have created and just appreciate how far we have managed to come. So sit back, relax and let's go back to where it all started. And this is our glorious starter home. This is where it all began. The very first thing we built upon entering this world. And when we started this world, Bamboo had just gotten an upgrade and needless to say, I was eager to start using it. As you can see, I used bamboo fences, I used some bamboo trapdoors for the shutters and I used some bamboo inside for the floor. Another stroke of luck that I had was that I spawned in a mangrove swamp. And because I've had a notoriously hard time finding it in the past, I considered myself lucky. Now, if you ask any Minecrafter which wood is their least favorite to farm, they will probably tell you mangrove. Yet I gathered up a bunch of it and I decided to use it in my starter home and I think it has turned out absolutely beautiful. Also making its way into Minecraft in the 1.20 update was cherry biomes and of course I had to go out and find myself some cherry trees which I promptly planted all around my house. Now how good of an idea that was I am not entirely sure but I've got some cherry trees I've got my starter home and they still look pretty good to me. So let's go take a look inside where we've got some bamboo floors. We've got our very first smelting array. Not much of an array, it was just four furnaces, but it did the job. And we've got two parrots. Yes, we started out with one, but he was lonely, so we got him a friend. And over here, we built a little bit of a library. For no other reason than we wanted to use the new chiseled bookshelves. We also made a kitchen with a coffee stand, two standard smokers as a stove and of course this is where we cooked up a lot of baked potatoes. We've got some storage, we've got a few herbs and spices growing pots all around the kitchen and other than that not really much to speak of so let's head upstairs. And upstairs we will find our bedroom with our magnificent double bed handcrafted from the finest mangrove wood. We also have our very first storage system which consisted of a grand total of six double chests. Then over here we also have the dragon egg and a beautiful decorated pot from one of our early adventures when we set out to find and explore some trail ruins. We also have some armor trim which we are diligently studying at our desk and outside we have a little balcony where we can stand and look out over the entire kingdom and also keep a keen eye on the harbor just to keep abreast of all developments. And we also built a few starter farms. As you can see, we've got some wheat growing, we've got some carrots growing, and of course, we planted a potato patch as well. The bamboo farm is now a horse stable, and I think it was a significant upgrade. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I think chicken horse and tank are really enjoying their new home. And just look at the two of them getting along like a house on fire. Now during the early days of this world, I decided to explore as much of the 120 update as I could and that included getting myself a camel. And once I had the camel, of course I had to build a home for it and I tried to incorporate as many desert elements as I could. I tracked in some sand, I put up some cacti, but one thing that I did not know was that camels don't really pay much attention to fences or fence gates and they just climb right over it. As a result, my camel is still missing. I have no idea where it went, but maybe one day we will be reunited. Moving over to this side, we have our sugarcane farm that has been serving us since day one. We have a little bit of a pond over there. We have the cow pen over there. And if we go along down this road, we will find the archway 
welcoming all weary travelers to Cherry Manor. Also included in the 120 update were the sniffers. And of course, I just had to have some of these magnificent beasts. I mean, just look at them. We've got Stinky over there. We've got Sniffy. And back there, we have Snoof. And these lumbering beasts have been a pain in my backside for as long as I've had them. But I do love them. Just look at, just look at that. Those nostril action going there as he sniffs out something tasty. And of course, they give us some beautiful flowers. Now back here we have Snoof, the OG, the old man, the only remaining sniffer of my original three. He's had many trials throughout his life, but he's come out on the other end stronger than ever. And just look at the three of them, absolutely gorgeous. Moving on from the sniffers, the next item we tackled was the dam over here. And I spent many, many hours planning this dam. First I planned it way too small, then I planned it way too big, but on my third try I managed to get it just right. And we have a bunch of stuff everywhere around the world, I don't know if I'll ever get to collecting it all, but let's get back to the dam. Over here we have a little hydroponic farm, which I put here for no other reason than it was looking a little bit empty. I also thought it would provide the villagers with a source of food, but as I learned recently, Villagers don't tend to stay alive too long around here. Over here we've got the overflow gate and you can see the water cascading over the wall into the cistern below. And everything is looking absolutely gorgeous around this end. Now I suppose we can do a little bit more developing on this side, but I'm not entirely sure what I would do here. On the other side we have the farming district and we'll get to that a little bit later. But for now let's just take a step back and admire this damn wall that I spent hours and hours planning and constructing. And just looking at it, it is beautifully detailed. I really do love the way that it turned out. And I have no doubt that all the time I spent constructing it was really worthwhile. But it's time to move on, take a quick rewind with some shaders and move on to the village. Now whether it's a village or a town I suppose is still open for debate but to get there we need to cross these rickety bridges. As you can see these bridges are old, they are falling apart in some places but they still look absolutely beautiful. And we've got the island here in the middle with a cherry tree and just across this bridge we have the bigger island with the remnants of the previous inhabitants of these lands. Now nobody knows who they were, where they went and why they left, but they did leave behind some beautiful ruins for us to explore and just look at this tower. As you can see the villagers have done their best to preserve it but they are not master builders and unfortunately propping it up with some bamboo supports were the best that they could manage. But if we stand on top here we get a beautiful view of everything around us. Another thing that the previous inhabitants left was an artifact of great power. I am of course referring to the gates of hell, the nether portal. Now except for one dimwit named Fungosaurus Rex, everybody knows to steer clear of it. But I haven't done any development in the nether, so we don't have much to see there. Instead, let's go and take a look at the village itself. And we're going to start with this little house over here because it was the first house that was constructed in the new village after I tore down the old village and replaced it with something much better. However, as beautiful as it is, it doesn't take the title of the first building to be constructed in the new village because that title belongs to something much grander. It belongs to the cathedral. Yes, this behemoth was the first building that I built in this town and it still stands as a beacon of beauty 
and impressive workmanship. I mean, just look at it. Absolutely gorgeous with its stained glass and its beautiful arches. And like many things in this world, it started because I had no clue what I was doing. I originally built it in the side of the mountain over there, just sticking out halfway because I didn't want to build the entire thing. However, once I finished the front, I decided it was too beautiful to leave half buried over there and I added the rest of the walls and moved it over here where it could have a place of pride. And I see there's a trap door over there that I managed to not flip down correctly. Let's go get... Ooh. Thank you, Feather Falling Boots. Let's get up there and let's see if we can flip that trap door up to its proper position. Nah, missed it. There we go. As I was saying, it was originally meant to be buried in this mountain over here, but I'm really glad that I decided to move it over there. And if you're thinking it doesn't look much like a cathedral, you are 100% correct. I have spent many hours going back and forth whether it's a temple or a cathedral and finally, I can say that I have an answer. It is indeed a cathedral and this ladies and gentlemen is not its final form. I have designed an additional bit which will stretch out all the way here in the front and it's going to look absolutely phenomenal once it's done. Hopefully I'll get to building that soon and you will be able to see it in all its glory. But it's time to move back into the village itself and let's go meet the villagers. Over here we have the trading hall. Now this was originally designed as housing, not as a trading hall, but once I saw all of the space inside of it, I knew that it had to be a trading hall. And the inside uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. I was in a rush to get some villagers in here and I didn't pay much attention. All I wanted to do was get some enchanted books so I could make some enchanted gear. And as you can see, I never got around to finishing the upper levels. Over here we have some rooms that are still completely empty and if we go upstairs you will see this little hallway doesn't have much to show either. We've got some balconies on both sides though, that is very nice and we, ha we have this guy over here messing up the spawn rates of our iron farm. So sir, if you would, please get out of here. Seriously, the nerve of some people. Anyway, let's get back to the trading hall. And as I was saying, we never got around to finishing these upper levels. If we go over here to the other side, up this ladder, you will see another room that has absolutely nothing in it. Now, if I was smart and I spent a little bit more time constructing this, I could have had different traders on different levels, but it is what it is. And coming out of the trading hall, we have a view of the back of the Mason's Guild. Another lovely building, which unfortunately suffered a terrible, terrible tragedy in the form of a fire. And you can still see it smoldering away up there. But this is another one of the buildings that I absolutely love. Now, if we pop inside, you'll see this one. I actually did a full decoration for the interior. Over here, we've got some stone cutters and a closet, which was the source, I suspect, of the tragic events that unfolded here. I think the stonemasons got turned into zombies by a zombie that spawned in that closet and then got massacred by an iron golem that spawned on this very table. This table where the master masons would sit, grade the quality of the stones produced by the other masons and then okay them for sale. Now over here at the top you will see there is a bit of charred remains. And that happened when a fire broke out in this very guild. Nobody knows how it happens, don't ask about it, because I know nothing at all. You'll see some charred remains, but the rooms remained largely untouched. As you can see, nothing in here got burned for some mysterious reason. Even around the corner, the closet is still fine. Over on the other room, you will also see that it is absolutely untouched. So, there is a chance that maybe one day, I will rebuild this place and reintroduce the Stonemasons Guild. Up top, same story, we've got two beautiful rooms that was untouched by the fire. On this side, no fire damage either. And over here is where the building took the brunt of it. You can still see it smoldering away among the blackened stones and the wood that has been reduced to charcoal. But enough of this mysterious tragedy, let's move on with the tour. Now this little house down here was actually the second house that I built in the new village and it was built on top of the remains 
of the previous village that I tried to build here. As you can see, we've got a lovely high roof over there. And other than that, nothing much to speak of. But it does lead out to one of my favorite builds in this entire world. And that is, of course, the magnificent Purple Parrot Inn. Here we go, the Purple Parrot Inn. And this is a beautiful building. I am really proud of it. As you can see, I used a bunch of different blocks to create different levels for it. But inside is what counts the most. And I think to give you a proper explanation of why I say that, I will need to switch on some shaders. And there we go. As you can see, we have the bar area over here with some wine barrels and cups on it. But what I tried to create was a gloomy, dimly lit atmosphere that you might expect to find in a medieval tavern. If we go upstairs, you will find a private dining area for more affluent visitors. And over here, we have one of the bigger rooms that has a lovely balcony, giving you a magnificent view of the town and the lake. If we go back inside and move to the other side of this floor, you will find one of the biggest rooms in the house. The second biggest, in fact. And just look at that beautiful double bed and another magnificent balcony where you can get a beautiful view of the cathedral. Of course, all of this luxury comes at a cost. So if your coin purse is a bit light, you might need to settle for one of these rooms, which are tiny but cozy. I mean, just look at this. Everything you need if you're just planning on staying a day or two. Over here, we have another tiny room. I think this is probably the smallest of the lot, but it's good enough if you're only spending a day or two here. Then in this corner, we have the master suite, the biggest room in the house. And just look at it. Beautiful paintings, an armor stand where you can hang your clothes, and of course, all the luxuries of home. But that is pretty much it for the inn, and I think it's time that we move on to the next section of our tour. And that will take place right on the other end of town. And over here we have one of the last houses to be built in the town. It was supposed to be the butcher's house, and there's two villagers that insist on living up on the balcony. I've given up on trying to rescue them. I don't know why they insist on going there, but maybe it has something to do with the staircase over there being so close to the roof. No matter, let's take a look inside. And over here you can see we have the butcher's smoker where he makes some amazing meats. Over here on his table, he's got a feast laid out for his family. And in here we have the bedroom. We've got space for four people, the butcher, his partner, and their kids. And just outside the butcher's front door, we have the beautiful communal garden. Now I wanted this place to be an explosion of color and as such, normal flowers simply wouldn't cut it. So what I've done is actually waterlogged some mangrove roots and then placed coral on top of it, giving us this beautiful color. And of course, we had to surround it with a circle of magnificent quartz. Now, I really am happy with this garden, but sometimes I wish I had made it just a little bit bigger. It seems a little bit small, but it is what it is, I suppose. Maybe in the future we can redo it, but for now, it's just fine. Next to the garden, we have the staircase leading up to the magnificent bridge. And I must say, this bridge, I would say, is one of the best things that I have ever... But I, let's get back up here. As I was saying, this bridge is probably one of the best things that I have ever built. I am extremely proud of it. However, at this point in time, it has one major flaw, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But first, let's explore the staircase. I could have just built the staircase and left it at that, but I wanted to create something with a bit more life. And as such, I have built some fountains to the side of it. You'll see we've got a pool of water here flowing down into another pool below. Now, before you ask, I've tried to put some fish in here time and time again, but Minecraft fish are as dumb as dirt and they end up just dying every time. Now, recently somebody commented it might be because tropical fish and salmon don't work well together. So I'll give it one more try in the future, but just take a look at the aerial view. Absolutely magnificent. 
Let's hop over to the other side because we've done some landscaping on that side as well. And what we've done is we have created a beautiful waterfall cascading down the hill and then forming a river which flows under the bridge, which of course is still to be completed. But I think it's time to take a proper look at the bridge and appreciate just how beautiful it is. As you can see, I've used some different blocks. Not too many though, because at this stage I didn't have that wide a range of blocks to work with. I've got some calcite in the middle there, surrounded by some stone. And then of course at the top, we've got some deep slate. And right at the top, we've got some spruce. And overall, this bridge is looking magnificent. Now, while the bridge is looking great, the landscaping is not quite completed yet. And as I'm going around this world, I'm finding more and more things that I have not quite finished. As you can see down below, there's a, well, yeah, let's, let's not speak about that. Let's rather go and take a look at the bridge up top. So up we go up the magnificent staircase. And of course, the plan is to eventually have the staircase link up with a path that will lead us to the jungle village, which for the moment is on hold. But on top of the bridge, we have the walkway and then we have the little hut over here, if we can call it that all built with some beautiful spruce, lovely arches. And at the other end of the bridge, we get to that floor that I spoke of earlier, because as you can see, the bridge just sort of ends right here. There's nothing more and it goes nowhere. Of course, once you get here, you can go down this little road that leads off to the side, but even this doesn't really go anywhere. We've got some beautiful custom trees over here. And then we have this tiny makeshift pond, which originally I built simply to catch this water falling from the top of the mountain. We do have our iron farm down here, so let's take a second to check that out. And as you can see, it is still producing. It has provided us with tons and tons of iron, so much so that we have got stacks of iron blocks. And it is impressive considering its simplicity. Over here we have Steve, he scares the three villagers over there on the beds. They produce iron golems and the iron golem gets lava fied. And that's really all there is to it. I am still impressed with the efficiency of this farm every single day. Now we've got this little lookout spot over here from where we can get a proper view of the bridge and just look at that. Absolutely fantastic. You can also see the fountains over there by the staircase and overall everything over here is looking great except for the bridge that goes absolutely nowhere. We have a fish. We have one surviving fish in the fountain. Look at it go. Okay, so maybe tropical fish can survive on their own in there. I will have to check that out. But let's get back to the bridge conundrum. Now the idea is eventually to have it link up to the castle at the top over there. However, that will require removing this mountain, enlarging the castle grounds, and that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of planning. So how do we get to the castle at the moment? Well, I'm embarrassed to say we follow this little alleyway behind the inn, and then we get to this staircase over here, which leads all the way up to the castle. Now on the way up, we have this little house over here, built just to fill this area, but I think it came out extremely well. I really do like it. It's a little upright house. And if we go inside, you'll see we have planned an interior, but we just haven't got to building it yet. Of course, there's a balcony where we can look out over the village. And if we go upstairs, you will see that there is plenty of space to do a lot of things. We even have a third story. And up here we, we have... Um, Hello, sir. Sorry to have bothered you. Let's get back down and let's leave the man to his thoughts. Now, when I was doing the interiors for the other houses, I just ran out of time before I got to these. And as a result, I still haven't finished them. But I really love this house and I will get to finishing the interior in time. Over on this side, we have another terrace. And on the way up, we have this tiny house also built simply because there was a little bit of space over here. And this one is not quite as well planned as the other one. As you can see, we've got some narrow areas 
Even the second floor is extremely narrow and the third floor at the top doesn't really give us much space to do anything. However, the view from the balcony is exquisite. Just look at that. You can see the entire town all the way over to the farming district and the new district with the mushroom and the bamboo farm. So let's do a quick recap of the town with some shaders and then we'll move on to the farming district. So for the next segment, I think it's time to get Chicken Horse out of the stable and take him to get a little bit of exercise. And we're heading off to the farming district where we'll be looking at that magnificent windmills, we'll be looking at the sawmill and we'll be looking at the farmhouse. Now this farmhouse was actually inspired by a photo of a real farmhouse that I found online and I think it turned out absolutely fantastic. Let's tie up Chicken Horse to the post over here and let's take a look at it. Now what I wanted to create here was a sort of not quite run down but a very old farmhouse with whitewashed walls that have been fading a little bit, perhaps in need of a little bit of care but still sturdy and going strong. To the side over here we have a small storage room and at the moment all we've got in it is some bales of hay. Not much else going on around here and it's just a little bit of decoration more than anything else. The farmhouse itself, however, is anything but decoration. This is intended for some villagers, some farmers to eventually make their way over here once I figure out how to make them stay in a designated area. So let's start off the tour in the bunkhouse and this is where the farmhands will sleep. As you can see, everybody has their designated cot. They've got some cupboards to hang their clothes and they each have a bedside table which they can decorate in their preferred manner. We've got some candles, we've got some flowers and we've even got a little bonsai over there. And at the top we've got a very sturdy thick beam of spruce keeping the roof strong and staying upright. You can see that this place was really built to last. If we go through the door here we have the kitchen and I just noticed I never installed the stoves. So that's something I will have to rectify. But the kitchen is looking great. I think once we've got the stoves in there, it will be phenomenal. Right here we have the dining and sitting area and we have this beautiful plush carpet over here. We've got a roaring fireplace and we've got night so let's sleep and we'll continue in the morning. So I noticed I have a carpet missing over here. So obviously there's one or two things that I might have overlooked while decorating the farmhouse, but overall it is looking amazing. I've tried to keep the interior as simple as possible. You'll see there's hay bales anywhere, just to make sure you know it is a farmhouse. And over here we have the big dining room table. I might need to redo these chairs because those stairs aren't quite working. But I want to draw your attention to the fireplace. Because that smoke rising from the fire over there actually goes all the way up the chimney and that is the same smoke that you see coming out of the chimney top over there. If we fly up there you'll see that there's absolutely no fires halfway down. It is coming from the bottom and that was achieved by simply putting a hay bale underneath the campfire which supercharges the smoke and causes it to rise high enough to come out of the chimney top. It's hollow all the way down. I think you might have seen me fall down here once or twice, but uh, we can't really see, but you'll just have to take my word for it. If you want to, you can go check me falling down the chimney. I think it was about two episodes ago. Let's move on. Let's grab chicken horse and let's go explore the rest of the farming district. And away they go. 
Running down the inside, we go to the left towards the smithing area. And there we have the forge and, of course, the smith's house. So here we go. Let's just tie up chicken horse right here because I think it's going to be better to go on foot. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is the forge. And this is where the blacksmith makes the finest tools, armor and weapons. And over here, he's got his basic tools. He's got his roaring fireplace with blistering hot coals. He's got his anvil, his grindstone, and inside we have absolutely nothing because I haven't decorated it yet. Anyway, I love this building. It's small, it's simple, but I really do think it has a charm which fits in perfectly with its surroundings. And if we just take a look at it, this was another one of my builds that was inspired by a photo of a real-life blacksmith, and it came out absolutely beautiful next up we have the little road leading up to the blacksmith's house and once again we've got the whitewashed walls with some diorite some calcite and some white concrete powder and it's simple but it really does fit the aesthetic of the area exceptionally well so if we take a look inside you can see once again we haven't decorated anything but it's got a quite a nice layout and i think once we get around to it it will look amazing. A little area up top here with a nice little view of the harbor and the farmland. Over to this side, you can see the farmland as well. And you can also catch a glimpse of one of my favorite builds on this world, as well as one of my favorite builds of all time. And that is, of course, the windmill. Now, once again, I'm realizing how many of these builds were actually inspired by real photos of real buildings. And if I can stop falling down, Perhaps we can get a better look at it. So let's just make our way back to the top. And there we go. Now, as I was saying, this windmill was also inspired by a photo of a real life windmill. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I loved it so much that I built two of them. You can see we've used some red wool, some red terracotta and some red concrete powder up at the top we've used some tough some cobblestone some andesite and some regular stone and overall it is absolutely gorgeous of course we have a fully decorated interior with the millstone over here you can see the cracked bricks down here from years and years of milling grain and we have the shaft going all the way up to the top where gearbox connects it to the shaft of the spinning blades we've got some wheat in here and overall, this remains one of my favorite builds. It is big, it was expensive to build, but I think it was absolutely worth it. So let's move on and let's take a look at the farmland themselves. And for that, we are going to once again climb onto Chicken Horse and continue our journey. But before we do that, let's take one final look at the blacksmith's house and of course, that magnificent windmill. And heading down this road, we get a nice glimpse of the back of the farmhouse, that big chimney, and then we arrive at the field. And you'll see we've got some scarecrows up here. We've got a good crop of wheat growing, and you can only imagine the pain of actually having planted all of this. If somebody tells you that a farm is a cheap way to decorate something, tell them they are wrong. The hose it took, the seeds it took, and the time it took to plant all of this was astronomical. However, I do not regret it for one second. Over here, we have a little cart which they used to move all of the hay bales to the shipping areas. And I think it looks rather cute. Continuing along this road, we get to this little piece of wall over here, which has fallen down and is causing a bit of an obstruction in the road. But Chicken Horse is strong. He can climb over it. And this path takes us down to this dock over here, where the farmers can launch their rowboats and enjoy some fishing on the lake. Of course, it also links up to the big docks over there, but we'll get to the docks a little bit later. Let's make our way back up and let's go explore the rest of the farm area. Now, when I said I love the windmill so much that I built two of them, I wasn't lying and here's the proof the second windmill and for this we used some green wool some green terracotta and some green concrete powder while following the same tough cobblestone stone and andesite palette at the top 
Inside we have another grindstone. Pretty much the same interior as the other one, but you can see the grindstone itself is in a different position. So it isn't just a direct copy. Over here we have some spare seeds and we have a ton of wheat ready to be milled into flour. And I'll say it once again, I really, really do love my windmills. Just look at them, absolutely fantastic. But there's still plenty more to see in this area, so let's grab chicken horse and then let's head down the road. And fortunately we don't have to go too far because we have the big magnificent farmhouse up at the top but over here we have two smaller farmhouses and this is where the farmers who crave a bit more autonomy and a bit more privacy live and we'll just tie chicken horse up at the bridge over here and then we'll go and take a look inside now this little farmhouse over here comes with its own little patch of beetroot they're growing some potatoes so they've got plenty of their own food and they've even got a little pig pen where they keep their pigs for some delicious pork chops and bacon and of course some well smoked ham and gee okay there we've got a disco dancing pig over there he'll do well on youtube but let's move on now as you'll see these crops aren't tended as well as the other fields but i suppose it's a case of the shoemakers kids not having shoes of their own but the crops are growing and I'm sure they've got enough food to get by. Inside, I haven't gotten around to doing anything special, but we've got a little door over here leading us out to the pig pen. As you can see, they've got their little water trough. They've got some pumpkins and melons to munch on. They've got a patch of mud to roll in over here. And according to my checklist, that is everything a pig needs to be happy. Except for some love, I'm sure they get pets as well. So let's move on to the other little house over here and it's a different design and the fact that they don't conform to any type of building style means that they were added as needed. So let's go inside and you can see that the previous owner has moved out but the new one hasn't quite moved in yet. We've got the fireplace roaring which keeps the place nice and cozy and I really do love these two houses. Nothing big and overbearing, just two cozy little farmhouses where the farmhands can stay. So if we travel down this part, we will find another relic of the ancient past. Something else left behind by the people who occupied these lands in the distant past. This was once a magnificent house, but as you can see, all that remains is a mighty impressive ruin. So if we travel up to the top here, you will see that we've got a lot of crumbling stone, we've got a lot of fallen beams, and we have just the vaguest idea of what this house might once have looked like. We've got the archway over there, indicating that there might have been another room on the other side of this. And if we look up at the top, you might notice that there's a little ledge, indicating that this house once had more than one story. You can see the fallen beam resting on top of the ledge up there and you can only imagine that this house was once very impressive but now merely echoes of the past. And our next stop is just a little bit down the way but we're gonna take chicken horse and go there anyway. First off let's take a look at this magnificent little bridge we have here over the river flowing into the lake over there and all of this was of course handcrafted so here we have the sawmill and we've got the lumber yard as you can see we've got a great collection of all types of wood here ready to be sawn into timber at the sawmill now the river was actually created because of the sawmill because we needed something to turn the giant water wheel chicken horse stay here and if we take a look at the side here, we can see that wheel and it was absolutely a pain to build, but I think it turned out pretty well. And it is an essential component of the sawmill because the water wheel drives the blade and we'll take a look at that blade in just a second. Now we've got the ramp leading up here and then we've got the log on the rails ready to go into the blade and be sawn into logs. Just look at this magnificent wheel harnessing the power of the river and sawing all of these logs into planks. The roof is quite simple, just some deep slate tiles. And over here we have some choice grade logs ready to be processed for discerning customers who are willing to pay for the quality. And 
Not much else out here. Let's take a look inside. Here we have the sawmill operator's desk. And as you can see back there, he's got all of his orders, all of his records stacked up there. And because this place is so out of the way, he needs a place to sleep. And there we go. A lovely big double bed for him in his own private little room up here. Now, of course, everybody needs a hobby. And the sawmill operator's hobby is growing little bonsai trees of all of the trees that he processes on a daily basis. You see, he's got a bunch up here. He's even got a few down here as well. And if we move outside, you will see all of the planks that have already been processed and are ready to be shipped off to the market. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different wood going through the sawmill. We've got some cherry, we've got some birch, some dark oak, some regular oak, and of course, some spruce. But where does all of this wood come from? I think it's time to go fetch Chicken Horse and do a little bit more exploring. And I'm very happy to report that the people here practice sustainable forestry. If we go over here, you can see the forest where they cut down all of this beautiful wood. And this entire forest is man-made. It was planted here specifically to provide wood for the sawmill. Let's just hitch Chicken Horse over here. And let's take a look at their wood wagon. It's a big wagon. It requires quite a few horses to pull it because it is loaded with premium logs. Over here, we've got some more trees that have already been cut down. Some of them are yet to be processed, but we've got some logs over here as well. And this oak tree still has its leaves on it, so it must be freshly cut. Let's move in a little bit deeper and then let's go take a look at what else we can see. There's a pile of logs over here and here are some of the stumps of the spruce trees that have been cut down already. We've got a birch and an oak log over there. And over on the other side, we've got a fresh cut spruce tree and you can just smell those pine needles. Just take a look at that beauty. It's going to be a magnificent log. Over here, we've got a little bit of a lake and this is where all the water gushing down the river comes from. But this little forest surely can't be all there is to it. So let's move up and let's take a look up here. Now we've got a bit of a campsite over here. You can see the woodcutters have got a nice chunk of meat roasting over the open fire. And this pit has been used quite regularly. You can see all of the ashes at the bottom of the fire pit. And that's supposed to be like that. And you can see they've got the fire going. They've got the piece of meat roasting. And they've got a few stumps all around where they can sit and have some lunch. And up at the top here, we have the main forest. As you can see, there's all sorts of trees all around. There's a little path going through where the woodcutters would come in, check which trees are ready to be cut down, and of course, replant some saplings for future harvests. Now we've got some birch, we've got some spruce, we've got some oak, and we've got a hole over there. No idea where that goes. But there are plenty of trees over here, and I think this forest is going to be around for a long, long time. On a more serious note, I really do wish that I did add a few more custom trees in here. But the amount of trees that I needed to add means that that would have taken an absolute age to build. So I settled for growing some. And with that, I think we have seen pretty much everything there is to see in the farming and logging district. So let's grab Chicken Horse. And let's enjoy a little bit of a recap with some shaders before moving on to the harbour. And here we have the harbour, with the warehouse being one of the biggest and probably most complex builds I have done in this world. I would say it's the most complex build I've done to date, but I think that title belongs to my zombie curing chamber in my previous hardcore world. So let's take a good look at what we have. And up there we have Mar Sophie's Chicken Hut. 
Now, obviously, all of the sailors coming into the harbor is going to be ravenous and ready to have some good food. And once the smells from the chicken hut hit their nostrils, you know they're going to be making a beeline for the chicken hut. So we've got some chairs, a lovely little umbrella where you can sit and enjoy some chicken. Now, Ma Sophie's chicken hut came about when I started building my chicken cooker and I needed something to cover up all of the ugly machinery. So before we take a look at that, let's just poke around. We've got some chairs over here where you can sit down and have a takeout order. You can have some drinks and of course on this side, we have some more of the same, some more chairs and the takeout window. And it is looking absolutely amazing out here. Inside we have the chicken cooker and you can see we've got five different flavors of chicken cooking over here. All of them equally delicious and all of them firm favorites with both the town folk and the sailors alike. But how does all of this work? Let's go take a look at the back room. And I just love the diner style tiles I've got in here. But here is where the magic happens. Let's just flip these down. Need to crouch to get in. And over here we have the chicken cooking mechanism. And as you'll see, we've got the minecart going round and round delivering eggs to the hoppers. And I had to come up with a mechanism of my own because I had a bunch of problems with this. Firstly, the amount of eggs that this farm is producing caused the dispensers to fire constantly and that caused problems with entity cramming. The chickens were getting killed before they could grow up and be roasted. So I had to devise a little timer which slowed down the rate at which the dispensers fired the eggs, allowing the chickens time to grow up and get roasted before they died of entity cramming. And you'll see there's the hopper feeding the eggs into the dispenser. We've got the timer going and you can hear them firing one after the other, giving a break in between just long enough so that the chickens can grow up. And let's have some more delicious chicken. There we go. And then let's see if we can get out of here in one piece. There's some more chicken that's being cooked. And um, we'll get it just now. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, we're out. Oh, that, that, that hurt, but we're all right. So this is the business end. This is where the eggs are being hatched. This is where the chickens grow up. And this is where the chickens get cooked. And as you can see, we've got a ton of eggs over here and some rotten flesh. I have no idea where that came from. Everything is absolutely chock full of eggs. But where do they come from? Firstly, let's get rid of this rotten flesh and then let's go have a look. Oh, come on, go away. There we go. It's probably going to get picked up by the hopper now, but that's all right. So here we have the collection system and all we've got is a hopper minecart running along this track, collecting all of the eggs being laid by the chickens right above us. And then over here we have a little minecart unloader. Now for everybody who says it doesn't work, there we go. It, it, it's over here. It works perfectly. I've never had a failure on it. But anyway, let's carry on because the chicken hut is only the smaller part of this harbor area. Let's just scoot out here, close that back up. And then let's take a look at the harbor itself. Now we've got the little staircase coming up from the farming area on that end. And then we've got the harbor and the warehouse down on this end. And I really do love the design that I've come up for the wall over here. Yes, it does look a little bit like a Cyberman, but I think that just makes it a little bit cooler. Anyway, let's go down on this end. We've got the same design being carried through down there. And then over here, we've just got a little bit of dock, which leads us to the crane. And I really do love these cranes. We've got three of them operating over here and you can see that one is ready to load some iron onto a ship as soon as the ship arrives. I think it's still stuck in the locks at the canal, but it'll be here soon enough to pick up its cargo of iron. There's two more up there. And then of course we have the warehouse and that is where all the goods are coming from. So let's head up the stairs and let's head down the stairs and up the stairs and then let's take a look at our ship the beautiful sleek flagship of our little kingdom and we do need a name for that so if anybody has any ideas do drop it in the comments below but the gangplank is down so let's go on board and let's take a look up at the front here we've got plenty of storage space and on the deck itself even more storage a few more barrels at the front and of course, the sails adorned with the colors of the kingdom. Back here, we have the captain's quarters and he is in the process 
of refurbishing his quarters. So you can see he's taken out all the old furniture, but he hasn't put in the new ones just yet. If we go up top here, we have the ship's wheel. And other than that, there's really not much else to the ship. It was designed so it could be sailed with a minimum crew, giving more space for cargo. And I'm sure it will be loaded up and ready to set sail very soon. But let's take a look at the warehouse itself. And this was a massive build. And I'm extremely proud of this build. Mainly because this was done without the slightest bit of planning. Everything I did here was on the fly. It is looking absolutely phenomenal. And to add to that, not one part of this dock was designed in a creative world either. Everything was done on this world in hardcore mode. So I am particularly proud of this entire area. But let's take a look inside and you'll see we've got a beautiful interior as well. And all of this was done to hide our sorting system. Now this is the shulker unloader. I designed it myself, of which I am also very proud. And yes, perhaps it's not the most compact or the best design system out there, but I designed it myself. Every bit of redstone in it came from my brain. Now we've got the shulker unloader here, then we've got the water stream that heads up to the sorting system over there and I have finished installing most of the filters for most of the chests. All of these are done and we've got a lot of chicken and most of the ones on the other side are done as well. Except for a few chests that I have no idea what I want to put in them yet. But we still have a little bit of empty space in the middle here and that's due to the design of the sorting system. That's the space we need to get all the redstone working. And if we go along the side you'll see all of these have been done. It's just these few chests over here that haven't been properly set up with filters. And that is because I am not quite sure what I want to put in them just yet. So let's go take a look at this magnificent redstone beast that I have created. From up top here, you can see all the water streams for the sorting system. I've got a little AFK spot here for when I'm unloading shulkers full of stuff. But let's go take a look at the unloader. And there we go. It is an absolute behemoth. And I'm sure a redstone expert would do all of this in about a tenth of the space that I've used here. But I really don't care. I built it. I designed it. And it works, which is the most important thing of all. Now we've got these little catwalks up here. And over here, you can see the sorting system itself with all of the item filters, getting the items from the water stream and putting them into the chests below. Now, as exciting as all of this is, we have more to see. So let's head up to the top area and you'll see this has been beautifully decorated as well. We've got some catwalks where the workers can walk. We've got the chain going out to the crane up front where they take all of the goods and put all of the goods back into the warehouse. And then over on this side, we've got some more storage and we've got these sliding doors which lead to the cranes. Now, yes, I do see the design flaw in all of this. And if you don't, well, then don't worry about it. It's absolutely perfect. If you do, however, just remember this is a fantasy world. And what good is a fantasy world if we can't take some liberties? Anyway. That pretty much covers the warehouse and I am extremely proud of this build. However, there is still one thing that I have to confess. Now before I do, remember that I have designed this entire thing. I have built it on the fly. Everything is working and this is a great personal achievement for me. But I did take some inspiration from a phenomenal builder by the name of Grian. Because there is absolutely no back to this. I have never finished the back wall for this warehouse. As you can see, it is still completely open. And well, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to actually get to it. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I strongly urge you to head over to the Hermitcraft server and go check out Grian because he's an absolutely phenomenal builder and a great inspiration to me. And rounding out our tour of the harbor, we have Dolly. The beautiful, the magnificent, the sheep. And Dolly is an absolute beast of an animal. As you can see, it took tons and tons and tons of white wool. But where did all of this white wool come from? I'm glad you asked. Ah, 
because one might think that I got all of this wool from a wool farm in the castle, but no, I have a dirty secret, and it is, of course, this hole over here. I had to set up a temporary sheep farm where I could harvest thousands of blocks of white wool in order to build Dolly, and I haven't let these poor sheep free yet, mainly because I might need their services again. But let's have a bit of a retrospective with some shaders, and then it's time to move on to the nature district. And now we come to the area that I like to call the Nature District. And the first place we're going to visit is the Treetop Village. Now this is of course on hold for the moment because I want to finish a few of the smaller builds first. But look at what we've done so far. We have created the basic layout of the area and we've created all of the bridges, the platforms and it is looking magnificent so far. However, this is going to take a lot of planning and a lot of time to finish and if we can just ride along it, you can see how big this area really is. Of course, I want to introduce some villages up here once it is done, but that's going to be a headache in itself as well. But just look at all of this and I think it is going to look phenomenal, but once again, it's going to be an absolute ton of work. We've got the biggest platform over here and this is going to be the main hub of it. I want to expand it on all other directions as well and this is going to be just the start of it. And I just realize I'm riding my horse on a bunch of rickety bridges way, way, way above the forest floor if Chicken Horse falls off here. I don't think he's going to survive. So we'll have to be careful and make sure that we get off these platforms safe and sound. Now I've got some ideas of what I want to do here. I've done some designs in the creative world, but so far I haven't quite hit on something that really speaks to me. So for now, this is the way it's going to stay. Next up, we have the little path that leads to the lake and of course the mushroom. And everything over here is looking absolutely gorgeous. There's plenty of nature. And let's just take a look at this pond. I'm going to try chicken horse up here. And then let's take a closer look at the pond. We've got some lily pads, we've got some cattails, we've got some drip leaf and some mossy stones all about. And it is looking absolutely gorgeous. And with a backdrop of the mushroom, it makes it all the more special. Over on this side, we've got more of the same and we've got some fishes down there. So I'm glad to see that they're at least surviving in this pond, even if they don't like my fountains very much. Now the bridge of course was the seed that sparked this entire area and it is looking absolutely gorgeous. The pop of red, the different types of wood and of course the living roof which is just beautiful. Look at it all. I love this bridge so much and it is looking absolutely gorgeous and it leads us to the big mushroom back here. As you can see it is absolutely ginormous. But around it, we've got a little bit of terrain work done as well. We've got the smaller mushrooms, we've got some bamboo growing, and we've got all of this different type of ground around it. Some coarse dirt, some pod soil, and then some grass. We've got some tall grass, some flowers growing, and this area is just screaming nature. I absolutely love it, and I absolutely love this mushroom. Now, if we go inside, you'll see that I still haven't completed the inside of it. And the reason for that is simple. I am not convinced of what I want to put up here yet. We've got a ton of space and I really do want this to be special. So I'm going to hold off until I've decided what I want to do here, design something that is absolutely phenomenal and then incorporate it. Now I have actually designed the elevator to get me to the top here. It is looking brilliant. But as long as I don't have anything to actually put at the top, I'm not going to build the elevator just yet. So that does it for the mushroom section. 
let's move on and let's go see what else we have. But before we do, let's just take a flyby and admire the mushroom from a distance. It is absolutely beautiful and the pond up front here just makes it all that more special. I mean, just standing here looking at it, I really do love this area. So let's grab chicken horse and let's move on to the next area. And the first thing we have is the path leading down to the bamboo farm. And this has all been decorated. And over here we have the entrance to the cave. And oh, ouch. And I think once we get this interior done, it's going to look amazing. Perhaps we can put some more mushrooms down here. We'll have to see. Now this area is the latest addition to my world and as you can see we've got a beautiful path with some custom trees but right now we are interested in the bamboo farm and I must say this bamboo farm is one of my favorite builds of all time. Starting over here we have some waterfalls coming down the hillside, they've got some mist rising up from them where they crash to the ground and then they flow into the little pond over here. Now, once again, we've got some lily pads, we've got some cattails in there, and this pond is small, but it is quite delightful. Then we've got the little bamboo bridge heading over the river, and on the other side we have the magnificent cherry tree. Once again, built using a photo from a real cherry tree. How well I've managed to capture it is up for debate, but I think it is looking pretty awesome. Now the fact that we've got some lanterns hanging from it makes it look even more special and then we have some bamboo growing between its roots reaching up towards the skies. Now we've also got this little path here which I have done with some paving stones in the form of stone pressure plates and I think this is the most annoying design choice I have ever made. But it looks awesome and I don't want to change it so for the time being this is going to stay exactly as is. I can always just fly right up to the entrance of the bamboo farm and avoid all of this clicking. And then we get to the bamboo farm and just look at it. I absolutely adore this build. It is one of my favorite builds of all time without a question. And if we take a closer look, there's just so many things about it that I really love. For instance, the little Zen garden we've got down here. And as you can see, it is actually doing quite well. In fact, I need to do some housekeeping here. Just hang on a second. Let's just grab the bamboo and then let's craft some bamboo blocks. And there we go. All done. All of our bamboo has been converted into bamboo blocks and it is dark. So let's just grab our bed. Let's sleep. And in the morning, we'll take a closer look at the exterior of this bamboo farm. So here we go. It's a brand new day and that means we can admire this place in the daylight and i think let's start with the walls we started down here with some pink cherry wood and then gradually worked our way up to the tip top where it is white concrete powder the lightest white we could find and i mean just look at it i really do love that gradient and it's the first time that i've experimented with a gradient like that so i'm really pleased that it turned out so well We've got some scaffolding that we've used for some windows. We've got some birch trapdoors for shutters. And then we've got some dark oak signs going around the bottom. And I think it just adds the contrast that we needed. But let's take a closer look at the roof. And you'll see once again, we've done a bit of a gradient on the roof going from black stone into deep slate into stone. And that gradient is absolutely beautiful. We've got some lanterns up here and then we've decorated it with some flowering azalea leaves as well as some normal azalea leaves and this entire build just makes me incredibly happy. I love it, the tree, the farm itself, everything is just looking absolutely phenomenal, including the path and the pond down here. And I think just looking at this, this is definitely one of the best things I have ever built. But as much as I could stand here admiring it all day, it is time to move on. So let's get our horse and let's move on to the next section. A few pieces of chicken, onto the horse and onto the path. Because this path is absolutely gorgeous. Once again, we've got the waterfall coming down here. We've got it crashing with some mist. It goes underneath the bridge and just look at all of these custom trees. And in addition to the trees, I've added some moss to the sides here. 
I think we could probably do with a little bit more moss on this hillside and I will experiment with that a little bit later. But right now, let's just move on and admire the rest of this path. On the other side, I have a makeshift pumpkin farm where I've been harvesting pumpkins to make jack-o'-lanterns to hide in the ground underneath some mossy carpets and it's been doing a great job of lighting up the area and preventing hostile mobs from spawning. Now over here, we have that little pond with the, well, let's call it a fountain for now, but let's just get off chicken horse, let's hitch him up here and then let's go in for a closer look. As you can see, I haven't had much time to decorate this yet, so it's still a little bit lacking in the detail department. However, over here we have a bit of a wheat patch and then we have this road leading to the other side of our magnificent bamboo farm. All in all, I really love this area and once it is completely done, I think it's going to look phenomenal. We've also got this little path heading out this way, which takes us to the lock house as well as the canal. And if we look at the canal, we can see all of the different locks down there. So let's move in for a closer look. Now, if you look at the water level over here, you'll see it is on par with the water level in the middle where the ship is resting. However, if we move to the edge, you'll see that the water level of the river is actually a little bit below the other water levels, which means this lock has been flooded to allow the ship entry into the harbor. And the lock house is of course where the magic happens. Let's have a look. You'll see there it says lock control and it pretty much does what it says on the tin. If we go inside, you can see it has been beautifully decorated inside and this is where the harbor master does his work. He's got a nice little chair here where he can sit and do some paperwork. And then he's got a bunch of dials that he needs to monitor to make sure all of the pressures are correct and that nothing goes wrong. He's got a little bit of a workstation there, but most of the time, everything is in good working order. So we've got our spyglass here, and if we grab this, we can take a look at what exactly is happening here. You can see the locks in the distance there. There's no water being flooded into them, but we can change that. You'll see three levers over here, and each of those levers corresponds with one of the three locks. So if we go here and we flick this lever, then we take our spyglass and you will see that lock over there starts flooding. Now, similarly, if we flick this lever again, it will stop flooding. So let's just keep an eye on that for a second. And there we go, the water stops. Now, the other two levers here does exactly for the middle and the riverside locks. You can see no water flowing there. We flick the lever and here comes the water. It starts flooding. And apparently it starts raining as well. I have no idea how I rigged that up, but hey, I must be a genius. So we flick the lever again and the middle lock stops flooding. So let's move on to the third one. You can see the riverside lock over there. We flick the lever and there comes the water. And finally, we'll turn it off and the water stops for the riverside lock. And that pretty much does it for the lock control. So let's replace the spyglass and then let's go take a look upstairs. And this is where the harbor master sleeps because he can never be too far away from the canal or the locks. If there's a ship that needs to be let in, he needs to be here to make it happen. So he's got his bed over here. He's got a few portraits, absolute masterpieces. And then he's got a balcony where he can come out, do a visual inspection from up top here and make sure that everything is running smoothly and is in working order. And then we have this little addition to the lock house on the side here. And you'll see there's a staircase heading straight down into the bowels of the earth. And this takes us to our skeleton spawner XP farm. And here it is. As you can see, we've got the spawner in there. We've also got the chunk border area with the water down there. As we move this side, the water. If we move that side, water. Very interesting indeed. Anyway, you can see some skeletons spawning down there and over here we have just a bit of a waiting room, a bit of a crafting room, some storage and of course we have our ender chest here. I'm not sure why, but we have it. Over here we have the nature cavern and this is just a lovely little piece of nature where we can come stand, relax and whack a few skeletons while we unwind. Behind the cavern over here we have the rest of the cave I'm not sure if I want to transform that as well or seal it off, 
I haven't quite decided yet, but we will probably get to that later. In here we have, oh, we've got a skeleton, but fortunately we can crush him with a flick of a lever. So when the lever is down, it's in XP mode. All the skeletons will land on top of that block and we can whack them with our sword to get some XP. So let's just demonstrate. There we go, skeleton whacked. Now if we flick this lever again, it's just in collection mode and most skeletons should fall down to their doom as you can see there. And that allows us to switch between XP and collection mode and oh goodness, that was not good timing for that skeleton. There we go. Most of them falling down and it's just collecting all of the stuff with a hopper minecart below. And below here we have a completely automated sorting system. First chest is bones, the next chest is arrows and the rest of the chests is there to collect all of the other nonsense that the skeletons drop. And that allows us to actually go and AFK while we're waiting for the skeletons to fall down and drop all of their goodies. So let's go have a look at that quickly. Yep, it's in collection mode. So if we run over to this end, we hit this button, we've got a little safe room where we can come and stand, protected from everything around us, and we can just wait for the skeletons to fall down and collect their bones and arrows. And that pretty much does it for the nature district. And then finally, we get to the crowning achievement of everything that I've built, the castle. And we're going to land down here on the terrace and take the staircase up to the castle grounds. Now the staircase in itself was a bit of a mind bender to get just right. To get the elevation and the curve was no small task, but I think it has turned out very well indeed. Now the staircase allows us to come up to the castle grounds and we have a beautiful garden down here. First off, we've got a bunch of custom trees everywhere. I don't think there's one tree up here that is not custom. And then we've got just some beautiful lawns, some flower beds, and everywhere it is just looking absolutely magnificently maintained and pristinely manicured. Over here, we've got some more castle grounds and even there you can see we've got a custom tree, but we haven't done much on the garden on this end. All of the attention has been on the front end. I haven't done the sides yet. And I do say yet because I am not quite done with this build. So if we travel along, we come to the other side where we have even more flower beds, even more grass, more custom trees. But of course we have our beautiful little gazebo. Just look at it, absolutely stunning. And this is where they'll have a band sitting playing at the moment. I've got a brewing stand there because there's a cleric around here somewhere who loves to swim in this fountain. In fact, I had to remove one of the stones just to stop him from falling in and staying in. But it seems he is nowhere to be found. So, hey, we've still got some fish in there. That's good news. But let's just take a look at the castle itself. And I really do love the detail on some of these towers. Just look at that one. Absolutely magnificent, stretching towards the heavens. And we've got detail all around. All of the walls have been meticulously designed and crafted to be absolutely beautiful. So let's take a quick tour. And we have the grand entrance over here. We've got some real nice depth to it. We've got a ton of different types of stone. And then we have the gate right over there. Next to the gate, we have the guard houses. And at the moment, there's nothing inside of them. But we do have a little farm where the gods keep all of their livestock. It was originally intended to have some pigs in there. But I see they've got one sheep. Over here we have the stables. The royal stables, I might add. And they are looking splendid. Just look at that woodwork. And of course, no horses yet. But we'll get some and we will bring them right up here. And I've tried to be creative with the stonework up there. You can see the narrow little windows crafted with some stairs. And everywhere, it is just looking absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look at this side over here. And we've got the staircase going up, which will take us to the gatehouse. Now, doing the interior for all of this will be an absolute monstrous task. I don't know when I'll get to it. It might be in a few months time. It might be never. Hey, maybe I decide to do it next week. Who knows? But let's move up to the gatehouse. And from here, you can get a good view of who's coming into the castle and who is leaving. 
Once I start doing the interior, I'll probably add a bit of a control. And hello, sir. I hope you're enjoying your stay. As I said, I'll probably be adding a control, something that can raise and lower the gate. But there's more to be seen. As you can see, we've got the staircase going down here, back to the exit. And if we go up the same staircase, we can go up even further, which takes us to this little catwalk up here. And this takes us to the tower on the other side. It also gives us a beautiful view of the farming district and the harbour. And over here, we've got more staircases going up to the top of the catwalk. And this takes us to the tower over here, where we can jump onto the roof. We're not supposed to do that really, but it's a good view. Just look at that. We can see pretty much everything around us, which is important for the guards to be able to see everything and keep the kingdom safe. Now let's just jump down here and go explore the rest of the grounds. So down here we get a good look at the front of the castle and this is looking absolutely brilliant. I really do love all the intricate circles and the designs, all of the clever little bits to make small square windows and stuff like that. I really, really do love the front of this castle. And I think the thing that I'm the most proud of is the level of detail that I've added to this entire build. If you look at some of these towers, you'll see that I have used every trick I could think of to add some depth, to add some detail and just make every part of it stand out. Now, if we go around this end, we've got another little courtyard here with some beautiful lawns where they can hold cocktail parties, receive foreign dignitaries, and moving all the way around, you'll see we have planted some bushes, we have added some beautiful windows on this end, and then, of course, we have the courtyard itself over here. So let's just go up the stairs, and we've got the lawn here right on the end of the castle. We've got a beautiful decorative deep slate ring going around the top. And once again, we've used the stairs to make all of those tiny little windows on it. I think this area is looking absolutely gorgeous. And just look at this tower. I really, really do love that. Just the combination of the stone brick walls and plain stone, and then carrying that through across the entire front of the castle. But I think it's time to take a look inside. And if you were expecting something phenomenal, prepare to be disappointed. You can see just how huge this thing is inside and decorating this is going to take quite a bit of doing. I have not yet designed anything that's going to do this justice and I see we've got a hole up there. I must have missed one of the wool blocks. But anyhow, there is one thing inside the castle that has been finished and that is of course our wool farm. So let's just move through here. Once again, not quite decorated, but it is functional. And you can see we have literally every color of wool available in the game being produced by our wonderful working sheep over here. You can see we've got plenty of some colors. We've used more of other colors, but we just need the one wool block to go and complete the roof up top. And this is probably the second level of the castle. I don't know if I want to make more levels in between, but just look at it. All of this colorful wool making this floor stand out. And just look at all of the detail we have going on here. I really do love the little white bit in the center of the castle there. And then of course, we've got the flag up top there, waving in the wind. Around this end, we've got some more towers and just look at them. I tried to design each tower to be unique to be different and I think I've done a pretty good job of that. Of course, some of them need to be symmetrical, but others need to be special. So let's just go over to this end. You can see there's another few towers over there and we've got another type of catwalk going over there. Now, all of this is still surrounded by some very, very gray mountains and I plan on taking these down or at least turning them a bit green. But we've got one missing block of wool here somewhere. Let's see. I think it is right over there. And the castle is finally complete. Just joking. It, it, it's actually nowhere near done. I don't know if I'm ever going to finish it. If I die before I finish it, it's going to be really sad. But I'm going to push this as far as I can. See how big I can build this. See how magnificent I can make it. And that, of course, means taking down all of the mountains around it. 
And here we are right at the top of the castle. And as you can see, we are literally on top of the world. Yes, we used anvils to decorate the cap of this castle because I had a lot of iron and I wanted to flex a bit. But that, ladies and gents, is all the time we have for this tour. Maybe we'll do another one in a few thousand days, but we'll see when we get there. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the world we have created. Leave a like if you did. And if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying thank you for watching. And until next time, beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.